Well, as the full extent of the mycoplasma bovis outbreak becomes clearer, farmers are nervously watching and waiting to see if their herds will be the next to be culled. But for some, like North Otago farmer Susan McEwen, the damage has already been done. She lost 600 of the 3,000 calves she was trying to fatten back in mid-2016, a full year before M. bovis had been uncovered. Farming runs deep in Susan's veins and she takes pride in her skills and knowledge when it comes to rearing animals. So to find out many of them were dropping dead from pneumonia or suffering arthritis was a complete shock and a mystery she just couldn't crack. It was only after seeing Checkpoint Story in May on the condition of M. bovis infected calves coming out of Alphonse Z. Stratton's farm that she finally made the connection with what she'd experienced with her animals. Like Winton farmer Zawallings, Wallings, she'd taken calves from the Z. Stratton's and like the Wallings, her calves had suffered badly, either failing to put on weight or having to be put down. Susan's now lost her farm in large part, she says, to the $100,000 she lost in 20 2016 due to failing to fulfil a contract that required her to get the calves to a certain weight. As far as MPI is concerned, the farm remains M. bovis free, but Susan is confident the problems she had back in 2016 were due to the disease. Her only work now is cleaning jobs around Palmerston, a big fall for someone who used to run the biggest calf rearing operation in the South Island. Conan Young and video journalist Richard Tindler travelled to Palmerston to hear her story. So this is everything? My life. After losing her farm and the house she'd called home for five years, Susan was forced to pack most of her belongings inside a container. The financial losses she experienced in 2016 contributed to her marriage breaking up and last year the farm had to be sold. She was kept on by the new owners as the farm manager, but two months ago she was let go. Susan's now making ends meet by taking cleaning jobs around Palmerston. Um, Pretty big fall from grace, really, if we're honest, from managing and owning three and a half thousand calf rearing operation to cleaning houses, living with my partner, and any job I can get. Susan shows me the farm she poured her heart and soul into all those years, working 17 hours a day rearing calves. So it goes right up to the pine trees on the left hand side corner. And originally we went behind the pine trees and up to that rise. Then it goes up to the water tanks, you can see on the ridge, towards that house through the trees, and then it cuts through up to the road up here. Losing all of this has been a bitter pill to swallow. I um, really struggled to leave here. I bred um, competition ponies for 25 years, and I put my stallion to sleep here a month before they told me they didn't need me. She knew straight away something was not right with the calves she was receiving in 2016, which suffered pneumonia and arthritis, and simply didn't respond to the drugs she'd always had success with in the past. It was destroying. It was soul destroying, mentally destroying. It was the worst experience ever. Um, pulling 20, 30 calves out of sheds that just shouldn't die doesn't make sense. As somebody from a prominent farming family with an honours degree in agriculture, a master's in animal health and a lifetime of experience working with calves, she was stumped, as was her vet and MPI. These calves were blood tested, autopsy after autopsy after autopsy, no bugs, there was nothing showing up. In the end, um, some calves were showing high copper levels and that just... At the time, I suppose it provided some sort of answer, but it didn't because I've used the same system year after year. The milk powder is a product imported. I know the product. I've had good results with it. Nothing added up. She didn't know it at the time, but about 250 of the calves were from a farm belonging to Alphonse Stratton and were sent to her at a time when the farm is known to have been infected with M. bovis. It wasn't until a month ago when she saw Checkpoint's story about the calves sent from Z. Stratton's to the farm owned by Sarah Flintoft and Ben Walling that she joined the dots and realised M. Bovis may have been to blame for her situation as well. 
I instantly got on the phone to my 2IC, who has worked for me for the last five years, and I sent her the video, and it was just like, wow, we've seen all this. But we saw it 12 months earlier. The following day, she got on the phone to MPI to tell them she'd farmed calves from an infected property. She still hasn't heard back from them and continues to worry about how far the potentially infected calves from her farm may have been sent when they left her in 2016. Um, because of the size of my operation and because the calves were all contract reared and owned by Grays Care, I believe calves in 2016 have pretty much gone from Kaitaia to Bluff. I think they're all Frisian bulls, they're all black and white bulls. A lot of these calves will now have been used as service bulls. And I believe the, car, the bulls that are still alive will still be all around the country. Very few of them will have been killed yet. We're still only, um, they're only 18 to 20 months old. So some will have been killed, some will have reached killer bull weights, but a huge majority of them will still be in the country. A Grays Care spokesperson admitted some of the calves sent to Susan's farm in 2016 had come from the infected farm of Valfonsi Stratton. But they said the ones that left her place that year were all sent to slaughter and none of them were used as service bulls. All records from that year have been supplied by Grays Care to MPI. Susan says the whole experience left her doubting herself and her abilities when it came to rearing calves. I... I know I'm from a good family and a good farming family and this mycoplasma thing, it's, if this is what's affected my calves and my life, it just destroys me. Unlike those found to have infected farms, Susan is unlikely to receive any compensation from MPI. In Palmerston for Checkpoint, Ko Konan Young Tene.